see this. And you see this. Radio. Standing next to the perfect English gentleman, Mr. Doug Bradley. Oh, you, me? Hey, I'm good. And you see how he's repping the Beatles always down for his country. I tell you what would uh, what would help you for that would be. You see that? Turn the air conditioning you know? off. Now we can hear what we're saying. The Beatles, absolutely. Yes. Sir. John Lennon's birthday today. Is it really? Yes. Only you would it be. It would have been. Would be the seventies. Seventies. Beatles. Let it be. I love that song. Yes. Now, sir, you are known for the franchise of Hellraiser. Pretty much. But you've also <coughs> done Pumpkin Man. Yes. Now, a lot of people always go, you know, Bradley immediately Hellraiser. Mm -hmm. As an actor, which was your favorite role to play? Oh, wow. I don't really cover roles, to be honest. I don't really think about them in that measure. It's pretty hard for me to get away from this fellow because he's dominated my life in the last 20 years. Um, the character in Pumpkinhead was great. I had, I had a really good time playing it. There have been lots of characters in the theatre as well over the years as well as it was in TV that I've enjoyed playing. So, and uh, do, you, do, you feel that, favorites. do you feel that maybe you're subjected to Pinhead sometimes, maybe when you're out looking for work and stuff? Not really, no. I mean, you know, this is, this is a game under the latex, I mean, you know, people are casting an actor, they're not casting an internet, so, no, and, it, and quite the opposite, uh, work has come my way because of my association with the Hellraiser series, so it's, it's done me more favors than otherwise. Now, as, as, uh, I just got into horror just a couple years ago, so as a fan, I'm getting very upset that they're remaking a lot of classics. You, sir, are, you know, to me, considered royalty in the horror genre. What do you think about these remakes? I think they suck. Um, I think they suck because, by and large, the movies suck. There's no need for them to be remade. There's no desire for them to be remade amongst the audience. I mean, and if I, if I felt, you know, what are we? It's been 23 years since the first Hellraiser movie was released. If I had any feeling that kids who weren't born when the movie was released were coming to me saying, oh, that movie is, you know, it's, it's old, you need to remake it. Or if people were saying to me, um, you know, for, for a movie made in the 80s, it's not bad, then I think there would be some kind of argument for remaking the movie. But I, that I'm, I get exactly the opposite. The movie is as fresh as a daisy to people who are finding it now as when it came out 23 years ago. That's true for A Nightmare on Elm Street, it's true for Halloween, it's true for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And there's not one of these remakes that has done anything other than trample all over the original film, in my opinion. This very afternoon here in Harlingen, I went to see Let Me In, okay. which is the American remake of the Swedish movie Let the Right One. I think is a, a brilliant film, an extraordinary film, a magnificent film, possibly the best vampire film ever made. And I went to see Let Me In this afternoon. I read a few reviews of it, and I was prepared to give it an even chance because some of the reviews have been pretty decent about it. I thought, okay, it's horrible. It is horrible. It just fails as a movie. Even, even without comparison with the original, it sucks so badly. It's unreal. Let me out. Is what I want to do. Let you out. Yeah. No. So I just I wish you know. We all you know we are all in this industry to make money to make a living. Fine. But when money is the top line, the bottom line, and every single line in between, I think 
think particularly perhaps on John Lennon's birthday, we might say, you know, when, it, when it's all about the money and only about the money, that's not really what I signed up for. It's certainly not, not what the fans I can definitely respect that. Another, another thing that's going on a lot in Hollywood is ensemble casts, which is, you know, it's coming back. I, I noticed it in a lot of old movies that they just get a whole bunch of awesome actors together. Sometimes it flops, sometimes it does awesome. Like, personally, I love the, uh, the Oceans franchise. Sure. Now, what would you, would you be okay if they took Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers, you know, Pinhead, if they put them all together in one movie, would you do it? Then all we would need would be the new Abbott and Costello and we'd be away, right? Uh, That'd be said. <laughs> um, I would have no problem with that. I think it's, uh, it'll probably be a, a cold day in hell when it happens, but, uh, yeah, sure. Now, everybody's coming up to you about Pinhead. What I want to know, I mean, I know you did this, but what I want to know is what you're doing now. I heard an awesome rumor that you are reading Edgar Allan Poe poems on audio. Yeah. Get a shot of this, please. Uh, this is a series that we're calling Spine Chillers. It kind of comes in two strands. We did that first, which is an audio-visual uh, version of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft's The Outsider. So it's me narrating the story, but I was uh, filmed in front of green screen. So I'm then taken as an element and mixed with illustration and animation to tell the story. Uh, this is now award winning. Um, and we've done a second version of these audio visual ones, uh, which is the Telltale Heart, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, which is just completed. Um, these are straight audio books. Um, we're rolling these out as a 13 volume set. I've got up to volume 5 here at the moment. Is there, um, is there a website that anybody can purchase it? Absolutely, um, people can go to. I mean, these are these are. We, we've got a Poe story and a Lovecraft story on every volume, on, on every CD. <coughs> Excuse me. So Poe, Lovecraft, Ambrose Pierce, uh, Charles Dickens, W. F. Harvey, uh, and, and lots of other people. And, and we're, we're doing Edgar's poems right through the series. And in later volumes, we've got I got uh, Robert Englund and uh, Jeffrey Combs uh, to come in as, as guest readers for us, which I was very excited and thrilled about. So, so they're um, part of the process as well. Uh, people can get them from my website, which is dogbradley.com, or from Renegades Art, Renegade Arts Entertainment .com. Mr. Bradley. You're a class act. And I want to thank you so much okay. for allowing me to do this interview. No problem. This is D. Look out behind you. You see that? Look out. He's working. This is D from These Nuts Radio. These Nuts in your face with the one and only Doug Bradley. Peace. Keep it rolling.